Hi guys, welcome back to the Knitting Expat Podcast channel. My name is Mina and I'm your host today. Um, you can find me online as um, Knitting Expat on Instagram, Mina Philip on Ravelry. Um, Knitting, Expat De Knitting Expat Designs is um, uh, my design name on Ravelry, Ravelry, so you can find my designs under that name there. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why that sounded so awkward. Um, there's also a group for the podcast, which is the Knitting Expat Podcast, on the groups tab on Ravelry. Um, show notes are below this video on YouTube in the description box. And I don't know if you heard that, but that's one of my cats in the background. Um, we have two cats. I live with I live uh, just south of London in the UK with my husband, our daughter, and our two cats. Um, and our daughter just turned two today. Today's her two. Year second birthday so um so yeah it's quite exciting today's friday the 22nd of february and um and yeah usually my daughter layla is actually home today and we i'm usually looking after her, which i don't usually podcast on fridays for that reason but um but yeah so she's actually not here today and i'll explain more about that at the end of the episode when we get on to um like weeks in review and what's been going on um, I wanted to say hello and welcome to new and returning viewers. Thank you so much. It's almost coming up to four years since I started the podcast, so which is pretty incredible to think of. Um, I started on a whim. Um, it was March 2015, shortly after we'd moved to Bahrain, and I'd um, no longer had a knitting group. And yeah, it was just I decided I'd only just recently gotten into knitting podcasts, and I thought, why not? I was still a relatively new knitter myself back then. I'd only been knitting for a year when I started the podcast. So I'm coming up to four years of podcasting and five years of knitting. So it's pretty exciting. And, um, and yeah. Anyway, um, on the topic of birthdays and anniversaries and stuff, I have a new, uh, two new patterns actually that have just been published a couple of hours ago as of the time of recording this. And those are my um, the little little red pullover and um, big red pullover pullover so this is the little red designed for children this one comes in children's sizes from zero to six months up to eight to ten years so a big range and for my children's patterns especially i tend to design them with um they are true to measure in like the chest area i don't like if i say this is a 24 inch chest it is 24 inches i'm not adding extra inches into that and calling it a 24 inch chest you know so some patterns do that uh where they have built in the ease um anyway so the chest the chest size is true to measurement but what i do is the sleeves and the body length of i've always written them up to be longer than is what's standard like if you bought a store-bought sweater for a child um of the same age range as the pattern is knit for the body and sleeves will always be longer because quite frankly that's where children outgrow their clothes quicker rather than width. Um, that's what I found to be true for my daughter. That's what I found to be true for people I've spoken to. And quite frankly, my daughter isn't particularly, I mean, she's a bit, she's definitely tall for her age. That's 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 true. But, and, and she's got a relatively longer torso, I guess, than usual. So what I find is with normal store-bought um, jumpers or pullovers, they're just a bit short on her and her, lower back gets exposed and i have this thing about my lower back being exposed and i think I, I think i'm just pushing that onto my child but it's something my parents were always um on a, on at me about when we were little when i was little so um so yeah anyway right now this um fits kind of like a tunic length on my daughter which is fine because she's only just turned two and this is the two to four year size so she'll have at least another year or two of wear out of this um, before she outgrows it and then just as she gets older the length will still be suitable for her to wear so like I said at the moment it's tunic length and by the time she's four it will probably be closer to a more standard jumper pullover length um, but yeah and the sleeves are nice and long as well on her at the moment so that's the little one and then the big red is just the same but the adult version so I can't remember exactly what chest sizes this goes up to and I don't have my phone on me right now to check but this covers a large range of sizes I believe there are 10 different sizes in this pattern ranging from like 
I want to say 30, 32 up to around 60 inches, probably a little bit, maybe just a little bit under 60, um, 58, 60, that sort of range. Um, it does cover a huge, huge range of sizes. Um, I can't remember which size I knit this in, but I think I knit this with like one or two inches of ease for myself. Um, and as you can see, it's a two color sweater as is the little one. And the red stripe is double the width of the gray stripes in this one. So the main color is the red for me or this burgundy sort of color. And then you have these cables running along the raglan increases. And then these cables, both on the front and the back, they continue down the side. And then once you get to a certain length, they start traveling back in towards the middle. So by the time you get to, you know what, this would be so much easier to show you on the smaller one. Um, by the time you get back to the bottom, they've come back in. And so it mimics the shape that the cable forms at the top with the raglan. So it's actually a very flattering shape, um, specifically for, I mean, more for women, but it's a very flattering shape. There is no other shaping in this other than the traveling movement of the cables. So there's no waist shaping, there's no hip shaping, no, nothing special. So far, most of my, all my patterns don't have any additional shaping in them. This makes them unisex and they could be knit for men or women. Um, there's no additional you can add shaping if you want to but there are no shaping instructions specifically intended to be used um anyway like i said so these patterns are now available i will leave links to both of them below this video and um if you buy them both together you get 20 percent off no no code needed um and if you buy one now and you come back and you buy the other one later you still get that 20 percent discount um uh over both patterns it will Ravelry will automatically figure that out for you um, so so yeah that's those um, and yeah if you uh, would like to support me then that's amazing and if you can't do that right now for whatever reason just got if you go on and you favorite it you'd like it or something that also helps um, get the pattern seen and out there so I appreciate any form of um, uh, support I guess is the right word um, I don't know why I'm so nervous I don't know I guess I feel a bit funny whenever I release a pattern it always just makes me feel a bit like anxious um, and I'm not a hugely anxious person so it's an odd feeling but um, anyway I have a cup of tea it's not a particularly cold day but I've really been fancying tea lately and tea is usually something I only go for when I'm cold but um, anyway uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about, and I'm, I know I mentioned this on the podcast a while back, but I had some leftover of the yarn that I used for my sweater. So I actually had a whole second skein of the, the, the grey that I never touched, um, didn't need in the end. This was the leftover from the first skein that I had. And then I also had almost a whole skein of the dark red. I did have to tuck into this one. Um, but I did the ca calculations based on what I'd knit. And there's enough yarn here to knit the small versions so up to the two to four year size which is the size that I knit if you invert the colour so you have the grey be the main colour and the red as the contrast colour so what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer this as a giveaway with a copy of um, actually both with a copy of both patterns the adult one and the children's one so the big and the little red pullover and this little bundle of yarn and the yarn sorry i should have mentioned this the yarn for the pattern was provided by the lovely cindy of mon sheep shop she is a indie dyer based out of france and she very kindly sent me this yarn to use for the pattern we actually spoke at the end of 2017 about this or towards the end of 2017 about doing this collaboration she sent the yarn to me early part of last year and i had the patterns finished knitted up and photographed by i think it was like october time november time and now they're finally being released so it took a while to get here but i'm so so happy to have used this yarn it's beautiful yarn it's her sock base so you could also use these for socks if you wanted to obviously whoever wins this doesn't have to use it for the jumper if they don't want to so i'm going to ho have a giveaway for these um skeins so all I'm going to have you do, like I've done for the last couple of giveaways, is just leave a comment below this video um, about whatever you want. Just leave a comment. And also, if possible, um, 
your Ravelry ID. That way I can send you the patterns when, if you're the winner. So um, if you could just leave a comment below and also include your Ravelry ID at the end, that would be great. And um, and yeah, I'll, I will announce the winner next time I record a podcast. Hopefully in a couple of weeks. Um, all right, so that was it for announcements and sort of administration stuff. I do have a few finished objects. Three of them are in the same vein. And um, and then yeah, we have a few whips. I don't have a whole lot of knitting progress because I did a lot of spinning this last week. It's been two weeks since I podcasted. So I have a fair, actually, you know what? I lied, there's, there's a fair amount of knitting. It's just one of my finished objects, it's quite big. Um, anyway, so let's move on to finished objects. Um, so like I said, the first, set of finished objects are these three hats. Uh, they're all done, all finished, all blocked. Sorry if my head keeps getting cut off, I can't find my little tripod that I use for my camera and I have it all stacked up on books and so the height isn't quite right, so I'm trying to be conscious of that, I just wanted to mention it. Um, so these three hats, so this is the first one, this one is, so this is actually, a, I keep getting ahead of myself. This is a set of patterns, or it's actually one pattern. It's a three-in-one cabled hat pattern. I'm still trying to figure out how I'm gonna name it so it's uh, descriptive enough without being too long. Um, so it's a three-in-one cabled hat pattern where you have the same basic hat shape, sh um, design, like numbers, and then you can just transplant whatever cable pattern you want from the options in the pattern. Um, to get like a hat of your choosing as it were. So I wanted to have all three samples knit up and all three are out of Lavender Loon Yarn Company in her um, non-superwash BFL DK base. And it's a really lovely base. It's obviously not gonna be as soft as Merino, but it's very soft for a BFL and for non-superwash as well. Um, I will say one thing, I've been, I was chatting with Sam, who's the dyer behind Lavender Loon, and this green, um, she when she she's going to put together kits for this pattern um so you can get three uh skeins of dk and i actually had a sizable amount of yarn left over after each one i think each hat and i did double brim as well i did double brim and i knit them all in an adult medium so they all used about 70 grams so you can definitely get a full hat in the adult large out of 100 grams of dk but um you, I still had I think about 30 or so grams left over of each colour at the end so um, so yeah there's a sizable amount of yarn in these skeins as well um, so she's putting together kits what I was trying to get at was the green um, this particular green which is the fern colourway she's um, going to replace it with a different green because this one uh, rubbed off quite a bit the dye rubbed off my fingers as I was knitting with it and it did bleed a little bit when I washed with it when I washed it but um, to be honest, like I always expect a little bit of bleeding with hand dyed yarns. That's just par for the course, in my opinion. Like I, it does not bother me. But um, she knows that it does bother some people, so she's actually replacing the screen with a slightly different version. That's going to be um, that's not going to like rub off on your fingers when you're knitting with it and won't uh, bleed. But the other two were fine. There was no issues with those those colours. So the first one, this this version is um, braided and this colour is cognac. All of these were knit with 4mm needles US 6s for the brim and 5mm US 8s for the body. And the second one I just told you already was the fern colourway and this one is in the, this one is the asymmetric. They're not super fancy names, they're very to the point. Um, and the last one here is this colourway is heliotrope and this one is the big and small version. So these um, are actually now in testing at the moment and so hopefully my testers will be finished in a couple of weeks and then this pattern will be ready to be released um, mid-March before Edinburgh Yarn Festival, which by the way I'm going to. I don't know if I've ever actually mentioned this on a podcast but I am going to Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Um, yeah I'm really excited about that. <laughs> Random tangent. Um, so yeah if you see me there please come say hi. Um, Sorry, right. I thought I just saw a wasp, but it's just a ladybird. <laughs> oh, okay, had a moment. Um, so these pom-poms, if you've been watching for a while or even just the last couple of months, um, when I went to New York recently, I 
uh, placed an order on Amazon in the US and got these pom poms. And these are these, um, they snap on. I'm trying to snap it off. There are these like snap on ones. So I just sew down the snap to the top and it's got a snap at the bottom and they just pop on. Um, the only thing I will say, and a couple of people had suggested this to me and I did this, is um, with these like faux fur, or even if you're using like real fur ones, um, these pom poms, blow them with a hairdryer once you've put them on and it really fluffs them up quite nicely. So they look really beautiful now compared to what they look like straight out of the pack, especially this black one with the white tips. Um, it looks really lovely now compared to what it did when it first came out and this grey one. These two are my favourite, I think, the pom-poms. I also like this one as well, but it's kind of got this little cowlick thing going on at the back, which the hairdryer couldn't get out. But it still looks really good. Like, I really love how these have turned out um, on top of these hats. And the good thing about this is then you can, if you do need to wash them, you can snap it off and wash it without getting the pom-pom wet. Um, my hair is up in a weird bun thing at the back at the moment, so it's not going to look particularly great, but I will pop one on to show you what it looks like. It's not the most accurate view just because of my weird hair thing going on. But um, but yeah, so this is the adult medium, like I said, for all three of these. I find that fits me pretty well. I can even get an adult small on my head, but it's just a little bit more snug than I would necessarily like. But, but yeah, I'm really chuffed with these, and now I just need to get them photographed. And then those will be completely done. Um, right, so I'm gonna move back a little bit because this next one's a bit big. So <laughs> my next finished object is something you haven't even seen as a whip. It jumped on and off my needles between between podcasts. And when I say jumped off, it literally finished this last night. Uh, finished binding it off um, around 1 a.m. I think. So this is a shawl um, I'd had an idea for for a while now, I guess a few weeks. I'd recently pulled out my Highland Peaks shawl, which is a shawl I designed a few years ago. Um, it's out of worsted weight, it's striped body and it's got a lace border in three colors. It's really fun, it's like this half circle almost uh, shape. Um, it's a little bit more than half of a circle shape um, shawl that I love to wear and it's so warm, so cozy. And I pulled it out recently and been using it a lot the last few weeks. And I was just like, you know what? I really want to design something else in this shape. I really like this. And I had this other idea for what I was going to do with this yarn um, that I decided to use, sort of like amalgamate the ideas. And lo and behold, this is what it's turned out. And I'm so in love with this. So in love with how this has turned out. It is incredible. Um, I did actually end up adding a fourth color to, the, to this. So it's actually four skeins of yarn that I used almost all of it. So four 100 gram skeins of fingering weight yarn um, is in this. And I think combined, I have none of this yellow color and this gray color. Um, there's absolutely, where is it? This gray and this yellow. There is none of that yarn left. Every last scrap is in this shawl. I have a little bit of this color and a little bit of this blue at the end left. And all together, I have about 20 grams of yarn left out of four skeins of yarn. So this shawl uses up every last little bit scrap of yarn. You don't have a lot left over at all. So very good um, in terms of yarn usage. Um, you're not gonna end up with tons of leftovers. Um, I find that really frustrating with men projects require you to, you know, to like break into a whole skein of yarn and you barely use half of it or something, or you have huge amounts left over. Um, so I try wherever possible to create patterns that use up as much yarn as possible. And this is such that you can, um, uh, the color changes don't have to happen on specific rows. They kind of, specific rows, they kind of happen as and when you need them to happen within the pattern, which is great. And uh, yeah, so the yarn is actually held triple, which is why it's not much bigger than this because four skeins of yarn knit as a single strand would be much larger. But, um, so it's knit with the yarn held triple on six millimeter needles. So the main um, yarn that I picked out to use for this was by Primrose, Primrose Yarn Company. Um, it's all of the yarns I use from her are on her Sophia base, um, which is her MCN. This doesn't have to be knit out of MCN, obviously. You can knit this out of any yarn you want. And uh, Primrose Yarn Company has some other lovely bases as well that would work well for this. Um, so the first colour is embers, which is this like neutral background with 
um, really lovely pops of um, yellows, oranges and browns. And then that sort of blends into this yellow, which is Copper Penny Dreadful, which then blends into this grey, which is like a blue grey, and that is Abyss. And then when I was getting to starting with Abyss, I realised I wasn't going to have enough yarn to um, get this to be quite as large as I would like. So then I came back into my stash to see what else would go with this, and I wasn't sure. I was trying to look for like a dark grey or something, and I was like, but none of the greys I had really worked. Um, and then I realised the grey, the Abyss grey, is very much a blue grey. Uh, it's like a steely, it's, yeah, it's definitely a cooler blue grey. Um, so I had a look and I had a skein of um, this navy colour, which I absolutely loved. And it's by Woo Sheeps, who are a UK based dyer. And I picked this skein up a couple of years back in 2016 at um, Fibre East in the UK. And this colourway is called Put Your Camel to Bed, which I thought was quite funny. And it's a 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon yarn. And so I used that as the fourth colour just to get that added bit of length. And then I went back and used Ember, or the Ember's colourway, to do my I-cord bind off at the end. And I really like that pop. I, I love a contrasting bind off because I feel like it gives a really nice pop to the edge. And you can see at the back, with the way that this shawl is worked, all the, so the ends are here, all the ends are woven in as you go along. You see that there? Other, so you only end up with um, two, two ends at the end because even when I cast on with the embers for the, for the end bit here I wove in the end as I went so there's only two ends at the end one end at the beginning and that's it to weave in once you're done all the other ends from when you're switching yarns and all of that I you just weave them in as you go all of that will be explained in the pattern if I can figure out how to word it without it sounding super complicated because it's not complicated at all the pattern is mostly written up now I sort of wrote it up as I went and all I have left to do now is to sit down and write out the instructions on how you change colours and do that part of it because that's an important aspect of the shawl. <laughs> um, it was knit using 6mm needles uh, but it's got a nice weight to it as well. So two ways you can wear this. One is a very traditional shawl way of wearing it which is over the shoulders. And because of the shape of it, it does just sit quite nicely. And because it has that weight to it, you don't feel like it's just going to slip off the shoulders. And this is pre-blocking, obviously, um, if that wasn't clear. I haven't blocked this yet, so it'll probably grow a smidge as well. I won't be stretching it out too much when I block it, just because it's already... You kind of don't want to lose that garter squish, in my opinion. But um, but yeah, I absolutely love how this how this sits. But what I'm thinking of doing is the thing that I love to do right now, which I've... after the last shawl and it was like adding buttons to shawls because especially shawls that have eyelets in them they lend themselves to just having a couple of small buttons added on to help with closure like holding it closed so what i'm thinking is adding a couple of buttons in this gray section here so then using the eyelets on the other side you can just close it and then just have one or two buttons just holding it closed and so when you're wearing it like this I, there again, no risk of it falling off, no need to worry about using a shawl pin or any other sort of closure, it's right there on the shawl. And then the other way you can wear this shawl is, the other typical way of wearing these shawls is bandana style. And But because of the shape of this shawl, the tails are quite short. The tails are quite short, as you can see, they're right up here. So that's quite short for most people and even for me like I don't typically like I'd like the tails to be a little bit longer so that when it's under here I can tie them up and these ones I can't without like kind of choking myself so but this is how I would wear this shawl like this rolled up around the neck and then you can either spread these bits out over the shoulders like that so the, once again what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop a couple of buttons on the ends on the tips where the eye cord starts and ends each end and so then the buttons at that end I can then just pop through an eyelet once I've got it on my neck I've zhuzhed it how I like it pop it through a couple of the eyelets and that keeps those ends in place they're not going to move and and yeah and then the shawl will stay on and I would have to worry about those about, about like about it falling off my neck um so yeah that's my plan and I'm also going to have instructions on how to do that 
in the pattern or about like how to figure out where to place them place buttons and stuff and obviously you can pick buttons that either blend in and so they won't show up too much or you can pick buttons that stand out and have it be kind of like a feature on the shawl as well um and i've actually got a name for this one for once i am not stuck naming something naming a design so this one is going to be called the starry skies shawl i was very much inspired by the colors kind of re remind me of that van gogh painting which is a very popular from like the exploding tardis is also really popular from like doctor who's again inspired by that colorway that colorway that painting but i didn't want to call it starry night which is the name of the van gogh painting because there's um a lot already associated with that so i thought i'd go with starry skies instead um so that's why i decided to name it it's mainly all in garter with these rows of eyelets for interest and then at the edge um switch to doing the eyelets slightly differently again just to switch it up a bit and make it clear that you know this is the edge now and you're coming up to the end but um but yeah so this i'm hoping my tech editor has been great even though she's just had a baby she's still um when she finds the time to take a look at stuff she is able to uh she's been able to take a look at a couple of designs for me so far so once i've had that i'm trying to get that design finished up today if i can and then send it off to her and whenever she has time hopefully if she can get round to it at some point then i will be getting it out to testers as soon as that's done and then um and then yeah then that'll be out soon as well i'm not sure if i'm going to release it straight away or if i'm going to hold off and release it a little later this year like maybe towards the end of summer because it's quite a heavy shawl it's quite a warm shawl and we're kind of coming up towards the end of winter now and i'm not really sure how many people are going to want to knit a shawl with yarn held triple <laughs> in the upcoming warmer months so i'm thinking this one might be one that i just it might be a design that i bank and release it later in the year let me know your thoughts i'm interested to hear what you think about that i've realized that if i design like heavier weight garments tend to do better if I release them later in the year rather than over like the warmer warmer months so um let me know your thoughts I'm interested to see if that's something that you guys consider when purchasing patterns or deciding what to knit and things like that um so yeah that's it for my finished objects um that's a lot of chatter for not that many things I think but I feel like there was a lot behind each one that I wanted to talk to you guys about um I did say I use six millimeter needles, which are US 10s. Um, back now with works in progress. And I have a few things to talk about, I guess. So let's start with the first one. I still have that other design project that I can't show you, so I'm not really talking about that. But there is that on the needles as well. And then I have this, this one. This is the adult version of the Little Nugget Pullover. And I actually had a couple of really good name suggestions for this on Instagram and I can't remember which one it was I decided to go with now but I need to go back and check the comments but um, so this is the adult version and I'm striping this in these fun rainbow colours so starting at the top I have three different dyers in this so starting at the top we have um, Neighbourhood Fibre Company then we have Hedgehog Fibres Hedgehog Fibres Neighbourhood Fibre Company Hazel Knits and then the last colour is also Hazel Knits so the red I believe is Old Town um, this one is uh, Rusty Nail, the yellow is Pollen, the green is Logan's Circle, the blue is Coveralls, and then the last colour, which is this purple, is Spooky Hue. It's lovely. Purple colour. So those are the colours in this. I'm almost finished the body, like I said, I'm on the purple, so I have a little bit more to go, and then the ribbing, and then it's onto sleeves. Onto sleeves. Uh, and then once the first sleeve is done, the second sleeve is usually really quick because the first sleeve is the one that I'm designing on and the second sleeve is the one that just flies because I'm copying the first one. Um, another work in progress I am working on is a pair of socks. Um, I just cast these on last night actually because Perry and I might be going to the cinema this weekend and I wanted to have a pair of socks ready to go. And that's these ones. there we go um and this is out of lola did it um yarn on her low original base 
which is her own custom blend of yarn. Yep, that's right. It's 85% uh, superwash, uh, extra fine superwash merino wool and 15% nylon, 440 yards in 100 grams. And it's the Cozy Quiet colorway. And it's on 2.25 millimeter Chiagos, um, two at a time, which is my preferred method. So I did my cuffs yesterday and those are now ready to go for the cinema. Um, and another work in progress, I have another blanket square done and I literally just did this today. Um, we were in the car for a little bit this morning, which again, I'll get to later. But, um, and yeah, so that's, that's done. That's now finished. One, no, no, square number three, I still have to weave in the ends, clearly, but um, that is now finished. Um, and the last thing I wanted to talk about, and this will be the subject of another video at some point, is I using this yarn, which again, if you've been watching for a while, you'll know this yarn is also by Lolo Did It. It's on her uh, Guernsey Sport base, which is a non superwash merino silk blend yarn. It's a sport weight. And um, she sent me several skeins of this in her Rumble Stilt Skin colorway to use for a design. And I'm desi designing a Gansey inspired um, pullover for Perry. So, um, so yeah, <laughs> that's a challenge in se for several reasons. One, because my husband is incredibly fussy with his clothing, and um, and yeah, two, it's designing something for someone other than myself or my daughter. <laughs> My daughter has no opinions right now about her clothing and I can obviously design for myself fine, but designing for somebody else who has their own ideas on what they want is um, is a challenge in t unto itself. Um, <clears throat> so I did a fairly large swatch. By my standards, this is a large swatch. And I did swatch flat. I find for me personally, my gauge does not change that much between swatching flat and in the round. Um, I don't get that much of a difference in gauge. So I just swatched flat for this one. This one, this swatch is purely to demonstrate some ideas to Perry and to get some ideas from him in terms of what he wants and doesn't want. Having done this swatch, I know what I want to do <laughs> um, and what I would like to do with this, but it's really a case of getting his input and seeing if that's something that he's interested in as well. Um, anyway, so I've got a book actually about um, knitting gansies and I, maybe I'll talk about it at some point in the future. What I'm planning on doing is sitting down and talking through some design features and stuff with Perry and um, maybe recording some of that as well and doing like a, uh, like a separate video where I record the different stages of the process. Not in like super huge detail and like going to very specific things but kind of like just an overview of what each stage is and what I decide and how I make my decisions, I guess, on it. If that's interesting for you guys. You guys always seem interested in learning a bit more about my design process, so um, I thought that might be interesting. So we start at the bottom here, and I wanted to experiment with a new, new to me cast on, so I thought I'd try out the Channel Island cast on, since if you're not aware, Guernsey is one of the Channel Islands. Um, uh, Guernsey and Jersey, to the main Channel Islands. And um, so the Channel Island cast on is traditionally used for um, like Gansies. And uh, you can see here, I'm not sure how, how clearly you can see it. If I hold it up on the back of this, there you go. You can see at the bottom there, it's kind of, the Channel Island cast on gives it this little like pico type edge. It's not a full pico, but it's a little like little nubbly pico edge, uh, which I think is quite pretty. And so I started with a bit of a swatch in just regular one by one rib and then on this half I did a twisted one by one rib um, so Perry could see the differences and see if he preferred one or the other. I quite like it with a twisted one by one with the channel island but I have a feeling like a twisted one by one can look quite feminine um, but I also, so I do quite like it in the regular one by one as well. And then I have a little, little section of stockinette here so I can measure my stockinette gauge. And another thing that's very sort of traditional with Gansies is um, they would knit the initials of the person at the, on the bottom, above the bottom ribbing on the on the sweater. So I've done PP for my husband, just so he can see what that might look like. And again, also the color pooling on this is, is not gonna be the same as how it looks in the finished garment because obviously I'm knitting back and forth flat only over a few stitches. 
whereas in the end it's going to be spread over a lot more stitches in the round for like the body and stuff so um i'm not too worried about how the color placement is looking on this at the moment then um i had a section here where i was working there's double moss stitch here i'm not sure how easy this is to see on camera but there's double moss here and then there's like a modified version of like a double moss stitch here i definitely prefer this version so again i was just testing out a couple of different ideas to see what i like um and what i preferred and then next up we have there's kind of like a sideways chevron sh arrow shape here and there's a, another kind of like little texture pattern here and this one's kind of really lost but it's kind of like a diamond brocade type pattern and it really doesn't show up on this yarn so again it was a good um thing to swatch this out because this might have been something i wanted to include but swatching it out you can see that texture is just completely lost in this yarn you won't be able to see it very well or very clearly but what i did really like is the cables this section at the top I really liked. I loved how it looks in seed stitch. This is just traditional seed stitch. And I love these um, cables as well here. Um, I also like this. This is a, uh, sorry, this is a double moss stitch again on this side. I really like how that looks. I feel like, again, the seed stitch at this gauge might look a little bit feminine, whereas I think the double moss stitch might be more up Perry's alley, but we will see what he thinks. And then I've got this little twisted cable, uh, a smaller one at the edge here, which I really like. And I might, th I think I want to use this for some sort of like details on the sweater. Anyway, so after that, it just came up and I did a regular two by two on, on this side. Sorry, I had to check a regular two by two on this side. And I did a twisted two by two rib on this side. Again, so you could see the difference. And I just did a regular straight bind off, which is very reminiscent to what a long tail cast on looks like. So Perry could see the difference between what like a normal like long tail cast on edge would look like compared to the channel line and cast on edge at the bottom there. So that was really <laughs> quite a long winded way of explaining the swatch to you guys. But I wanted to um, have a few different ideas and stuff swatched out on one big swatch so I could sit down and go through it with Perry at some point and say well this is what this is and that's what that is and this is how these could work together and um yeah explain it to him that way I guess um in layman's terms and then I did do the trick of popping um knots in the tail to um indicate what uh, needle size I used so I, I do it based on the US sizing because that's in whole numbers um, for the most part and so I've got five knots in here so, so it's US 5 I used 3.75 millimeter ne needles which are actually still in the cake yarn <laughs> but but yeah so that's that and I think that's it for my works in progress did I cover it all? I think I did All right, next up, brace yourselves because this is going to be a long section, <laughs> is spinning. I can drag it all in here. So we have a lot to talk about <laughs> with regards to spinning. So first of all, I will say that the three most recent skeins that I spun, I have actually recorded spinning vlogs. So I uploaded a spinning vlog last week, which was for this skein. That I knit, that I knit, that I spun, and then I uploaded a spinning vlog yesterday, which was for these two skeins that I spun. So I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail about these three skeins specifically because I've already talked about them in great depth on those uh, vlogs. So I'll go over those really quickly. So first up was this one, which was a Felview Fibers uh, gradient bat set. In um, the, the fiber content is merino and tussa silk. 150 grams and I got about 370 yards or 339 meters of a, um, a chain ply. Uh, so this is roughly a uh, sport fingering weight according to the wraps per inch. Um, maybe even more like a DK now looking at it. Some sections definitely more of a DK. But anyway, ranging from fingering to DK in parts. But again, absolutely love how this yarn has turned out. It is beautiful, the fibre was so lovely to work with. I got to try a new drafting technique that I hadn't tried before and I'm just so in love with this. The sheen on it from the silk is just beautiful. Um, so yeah, 
and a decent amount of yardage as well so it's, it's quite good even though it's 150 gram skein it's quite beefy there's a good amount of yardage to do something decent with um, and then I spun up this skein which is by Barn to Yarn and it's the capsicum colour for the it was an art bat um, and so this has turned out to be 87 grams 136 yards 125 meters it's a two ply completely bubble pulled in a DK slash worsted weight slash bulky um, that's what it's turned out to be so what I did was the red is one ply and then the second ply was um, went from yellow to orange to green so the colors of different like capsicums or bell peppers and yeah so that's how that one has turned out and finally it's the skein so this is um, also by Felvy Fibers and this was a set of Rolags in the Peacock's Tail colorway. It was a blend of Merino, Baby Llama, Tussa Silk and Angelina and I got out of 101 grams I got 434 yards or 397 meters. This is squarely a fingering weight yarn. I'm quite chuffed with that um, and possibly this is my most consistent spin to date. Um, yeah really really happy with how this um, yarn has turned out and I have plans for this which again I did talk about on the um, on the vlog but I will mention again later when we get to acquisitions um, another thing that I did sort of around all of these things but I didn't talk about in too much detail I did talk about these these were some leftover bits of fiber from the um, art back the capsicum one so this was some red that was left over from the red ply that I did which I just plied back on itself and gave like a nice sort of like DK worsted weight so I just applied this back on itself which gave like a nice DK worsted weight and then the orange was some fibre that I pulled off the bats to sort of even out the weights a little bit and I spun it as fine as I could and I got like a pretty good sort of true fingering weight for that one so it's interesting to see how different you can spin up when you're trying to achieve different things so with that one, I was intentionally trying to spin a heavier weight of yarn. So, um, so like I said, it was nice to do a little comparison on those. Um, and then I did some other sampling as well. Um, again, I have some other fibers that's come in for acquisition, so I was doing some sampling on those um, and a couple of other little samples of stuff that I was playing around with which I might talk about later on other vlogs when it becomes more relevant um, I'm, uh, I'm aware that I'm chatting a lot <laughs> right now so um, another fiber that I spun up which I think last time I podcasted I talked about the hand spinner that I'd had and how this was like the first proper skein of hand spun that I'd done myself it was 50 grams um, two ply 100% Corydale and it's about 120 meters of a worsted slash bulky yarn and as you can see like I never I guess I never really thought about it at the time but this is definitely a woolen spun yarn incredibly woolen spun very airy very lofty very squishy and then I spun up the rest of that uh, fiber because it was in a hundred gram bag roughly 100 grams I think in the end I had a little bit less but so this was half and this was the other half so I spun this up as well and this has turned out to be so beautiful it's about so it's Corydale top it was by Willow Fibers and this is 44 grams 144 yards or 131 meters and this is a uh, it's come out to be a pretty decent fingering weight as well so really chuffed with how this is spun up it looks pretty darn even and I'm really quite happy with it and it's interesting to see the difference between the two. Obviously they were spun using different things like this one was spun on a hand spinner and the one on the bottom was spun on a wheel so they're very different methods of spinning but it's interesting to see the difference between them. Um, and interesting that the amount of yardage wasn't that different between them at the end of the day because for 51 grams I've got 120 meters and then for 44 grams I've got 131 meters so Considering how much thinner this was spun than this, it wasn't that drastically, it wasn't drastically more. Anyway, another thing that I did was I had, I was sent when I got my spinning wheel, I got some fibre with it as well to play around with initially. 
and I'd done my initial first couple of spins with that fibre until um, I ordered, ordered some fibre and had something else to play around with. So after doing all this spinning, I decided to go back and pull off a bit of the those two tops. Those fibres are both merino top and I know that merino isn't necessarily the best fibre to start with and I can see why people say that now having spun other fibres and then coming back to it. And specifically this merino, I feel like the white one especially is a bit harder to draft. But anyway, what I did was I played around a bit and I spun up another little sample mini skein of the pink and the white. It's obviously different um, flies. Uh, but with the white one, what I did this time was I spun it from the fold and I'd never tried spinning from the fold before and it was really interesting and it was actually really fun. I found it really quick to spin from the fold once I kind of got into the rhythm of it. And um, so it's definitely a technique I want to explore a bit more, which means I need to find some more top um, to play around with. Well, I've got plenty of this white and pink to play around with as well to practice. Um, but because I wasn't very good, it was always the first time I was doing it, I wasn't particularly great at um, drafting it evenly. So it's definitely a little bit more thick and thin and definitely thicker apply it was definitely a heavier ply than the first than the pink one anyway so then i thought it'd be really interesting to pull out the first skein i did when i got my wheel and that's what that is so this is the very first skein of yarn that i spun and plied using my wheel and this is reason and then using the same fiber this is what i got now um, but this isn't again a very good comparison because this is all pink and this is a mixed but I did do a mixed one as well I did do a pink and white skein at the beginning and I really struggled to draft that white one at the, at the start if you can't tell by how lumpy and bumpy this is but, and this is where I'm at now so it's nice to see a decent amount of improvement um, since I start, first picked up first got the wheel so I think the different the time difference between these two skeins is what um, uh, almost four months, not quite four months, almost four months. But yeah, so I was pretty chuffed with how these have turned out and um, the amount of progress I've clearly made. So that was fun. And that's it for spinning chatter. I think today I feel like I had a lot to talk about, and um, hopefully that wasn't too boring for you guys. And I just spilled tea. All right, so let's dive into acquisitions. Um, this pile of loveliness on the side here are my goodies from my Fiber Share partner. So thank you so much to Lou again. I did do a separate, really quick, sort of 10 minute um, unboxing video of me unboxing and opening up my Fiber Share package. So if you're interested, go check that out. Um, so yeah, really, really excited. I'm not going to go to a huge amount of detail on these. But what I did want to mention was the plan that I had for that blue skein that I showed you earlier that I spun. So this uh, Felby Fibers Peacock's Tail Fiber um, yarn that I spun up. Um, and again, I mentioned this on the vlog, but I'm planning on spinning up this blue, which is a Shetland BFL alpaca blend. I mean, you can see the colors much better here. And then um, this green, which is a Portland fleece, also blended with some alpaca. So I'm planning on spinning these two up and also, and then using the yarn with this to do my first hand spun sweater. And then because three, 300 grams isn't gonna be enough for me to make a sweater for myself, I ordered some more fiber, which is on its way to go with this as well. So hopefully the colors will work out and I will, be on my way to my first sweater spin, which will be so exciting. Um, and then the other thing included with my fiber share package uh, that was like fibery related was the skein of Malabrigo sock. And I talked in the unboxing about why Malabrigo sock is such a special color, a color fiber yarn, yarn company to me. And um, and yeah, so you can go check that out if you're interested in hearing about that. Um, I also placed an order with Spin Jones, who's another UK based um, indie dyer, indie dyer, fibre dyer, who, um, fibre prep artist, not sure the right term, but she produces, she sells fibre and um, she had a shop update and so I hopped along and placed an order. 
Ooh. So I've had these in my cart, these two bundles of um, the Muddle colour set. So this is a rainbow pack with Merino, Manx Lachlan and Tulsa Silk. Six 20 gram um, bits of bats, I guess, um, to make up this rainbow. And so what I'm planning on doing is spinning each one individually, applying it together, and then so I'll end up with six 40 gram-ish mini skeins at the end to retry that shawl design that I'd had in mind that I tried out when I was in New York and I said it didn't quite turn out how I expected. So I'm gonna re-attempt re it with this once I get it spun up. And then she also had this in her update, which was um, what she calls her urchins. So it's 100 grams of select a selection of carded bat bits. Um, and this was the crocus color set, which I just absolutely love. Purples to yellows to greens, some of my favorite colors. I could not pass this up. So what I'm thinking I might do with this, actually I'll come back to what I might do with this in a bit. Um, I also placed an order with World of Wool. I was getting a couple of things for my fiber share partner that I was sending to, and I decided to get something for myself since I was paying for shipping anyway. And I picked up 300 grams of uh, gray Gotland top, and I'd been wanting to try Gotland. And yeah, look how shiny this is, like naturally quite shiny. And a couple of the samples that I've knit, spun up um, I pulled a little bit off of this, about 10 grams I think, and spun up a couple of little samples um, to see how it would look. So these have actually been washed and finished. So th this one was just spun my usual sort of short forward draw type sp spin. So just a two ply. And then this one was spun using the um, from the fold method of spinning, of drafting. And you can see how much more fuzzy this one has turned out compared to this one. Like they're both fairly fuzzy yarns. But this one, not only is it slightly heavier weight, but it's also fuzzier in my opinion. And Gotland is one of those breeds that has like a really, has like a natural halo. Like it's super fuzzy quite naturally. I don't know how well you can see that. Let me pull it up against. halo there is naturally super fuzzy has like a, that natural halo to it it is definitely um, a scratchier yarn because of it but it gives you that sort of mohair look to it with all that fuzzies with all those fuzzies so um, I think there's some interesting things that could be done with this fiber so I'm not sure maybe something like I think it'd be lovely in like a hat but then one where you have like a lining on like the brim so it's not so scratchy against next to skin but um, so I have some ideas of what I can do with it. I have 300 grams or just under 300 grams now, but um, so there's plenty of fiber here to work with and play around with. So I'm really interested on this one, on this one, in this one. Um, and it was fairly inexpensive, like really inexpensive from uh, World of War. I think it was like less than two pounds for every 100 grams of um, the Gotland top. So um, definitely does not break the bank if you're going for like a natural undyed sort of colour. Um, then I got, I got more yarn support coming in. This one, I got some yarn support from um, Diane of Suburban Stitcher. We've been chatting a while back and she offered some yarn support for um, if she asked if I had any designs coming up that uh, needed yarn support that she could provide or to chat about stuff. And I'll say yes, actually, I do have something in mind that um, her yarn would be perfect for. And this is what she said. I probably won't be needing all of these, but she sent a selection because I wasn't sure how much I would, how many minis I would necessarily need. So she's actually sent 11. I think I may only need about eight in the end, but um, so we will see where we end up. But I, I mentioned that I was planning on reworking that waffle cow that I showed you guys a while back now and so that's what I'm going to do do with this and I'm really excited to cast that on soon so I think these are going to be wound up later today and cast on pretty quick 
That's so that. It's in a selection of colours. They're all on her sock base. And um, I'm not going to sit here and read out all the colour names to you, but there are some really pretty colours in here. So, so yeah, I'm really quite excited about that. So the last thing I got in the mail, and it's just been a mail heavy couple of weeks for some reason, with the fibre share and the yarn support and a couple of other bits that I bought myself. It's just been a heavy mail week. So the last thing I got in the mail is from John Arvin Textiles, and I've been meaning to do this for a while and finally got around to it. I signed up to, to their mill membership, which is really good value. I heard about it first from Grace from Babbles Travelling Yarns, and um, she talked about it a while ago. I've been meaning to sign up, and then I started spinning. And then I was like, great, now I can, now I'll sign up as a spinner rather than as a knitter. Because you, when you sign up for your mill membership, um, it's £25, and that gives you lifetime membership, which is incredible. And um, you get certain benefits with that. I think you get um, money off on their website, you get 10% off on their website, and you get 10% off at shows and events, and you get other benefits and stuff as well. Um, but they also send you a little goodie bag when you first sign up, which I think is very generous. Um, so they include like a little project bag, like drawstring project bag. Uh, they send you a little, uh, this is the spinning one, you get a little uh, knit by numbers mini skein. So this is their DK uh, 25 grams in knit by numbers mini number 30. So I think this will probably go into Layla's blanket. A little um, pinwheel scrap blanket which I just realised, I never told you what it, what it was I was working on when I showed you this. So this is a square from the pinwheel scrap blanket pattern which is one of my patterns and um, it's like a scrappy blanket project. You knit them in squares and then you join the squares together to make a blanket. That's what this is. That's probably what this will go into. <sighs> My head is not with it today. Um, and then in this little packet you get a bunch of things. Um, so yeah, I got, you get a couple of pins and I got my, um, membership card which is just like a metal needle gauge but it's also your membership card it's with your member number on it at the back which is quite cool um so yeah there's that uh and then they also send you some fleece uh fleece fiber they also send you some fiber so this is 200 grams of top 100 percent organically farmed polworth how exciting is that so I really like Polworth as a fibre, I've never spun it, but it's I know it's quite soft and um, comparable to like a merino, but it's, it is actually very soft. Um, wow, that is incredibly soft. That's actually softer than the merino I have over on the side. Yeah, definitely softer. That is really soft. Um, I'm not sure what the micron count is on this Polworth, but it's very luscious. Um, so I'm excited to play around with this and so the idea that I had for it was one of the samples I spun up the other day was this. So when I got my Spin Jones um, order a couple weeks ago uh, it came with a couple of small little samples of fibre off top which are the coloured which is the coloured fly in this and there's actually two one was like this blue green and the other one was like this yellowy colour so one so I spun them end to end and then I spun up some of the white merino that I had from the fold and I just applied them together like I said I was just playing around and um practicing different techniques and stuff and I just really liked how this turned out I like how it really toned down the colours in the coloured fibre with applying it with a just a white strand so I really liked how that looked and then I was thinking it would look so lovely together it would make it would be a really light springy sort of um, color I guess at the end um, yeah I was really inspired by this not entirely sure what I would do with it at the end of the day um, I guess like a really nice shawl or something because it would be entirely barber poled or it'd be really nice maybe knit up um, in like a two color project so with like this barber poled being one color and then holding with like a commercial yarn or knitting it with a commercial yarn um, as the second color or something 
So I'm, I'm mulling it over, but I have a fit. I think that these might be quite nice together um, to create a yarn similar to this. So that's my thinking right now. Um, that's what I'm. I might be doing, and, uh, and yeah, so I think that could be quite fun. And that about sums it up for my um, acquisitions, as if that wasn't enough. So I'm just gonna plod on through because I uh, don't have that much left to talk about. I'm getting, uh, I don't know what is going on with me. I'm feeling a little bit out of sorts. I think it's because Layla's not here and I know she should be here and I'm just a little bit out of sorts about that. But um, anyway, so knit along some giveaway news. We currently only have the Season Sock Club knit along going on right now. Uh, and the Season Sock Club, if you, if you don't know, is a sock club that I'm running. It's a pattern club, so I release a new pattern at the beginning of each month for the first four months of this year. And then the next pattern club is gonna start. Um, I do have a separate video on this channel about that sock club if you want to hear more about it. Um, you can go check that video out. But I did announce winners on the last podcast for a Just Because giveaway that I was doing. And um, one of the winners got in touch with me, the other one still hasn't gotten in touch. So the other winner was number 70, Nadine Price. So, sorry, not Price, Pierce, Nadine Pierce. So if you can please get in touch with me, that'd be great. And also, um, I did a separate prize winners video for all the knit alongs that finished up last year, and um, only about half of the winners have been in touch. So, if you took part in the sock knit along or the triple Dutch cardigan knit along from last year, can you please go back and check that video and see if you are a winner? If I don't hear back from um, all the winners by the next time I podcast, I will um, probably redraw winners. So, because I think by the, time, the next time I podcast, it's going to be close to a month since I announced the winners. So I think that's plenty long enough. And I do put prize winners typically in a separate prize winners video, so it's much shorter. So there's really no reason why you couldn't just watch it really quickly to see if you've won. Um, all right, so the last couple of weeks in review now. That's We're getting towards the end of it. Um, thank you for sticking with me if you're still here. And uh, it's what's been up for the last couple of weeks. Since our last podcast, we went up to London for a weekend. And then last weekend, I turns out I was quite ill. And I didn't really realise how ill I was initially. But I caught a really nasty virus. I caught the hand, foot and mouth disease virus. It's similar to chicken pox in that it's a virus and there's not much you can do about it. You just need to ride it out. It's also highly contagious. So once... Um, we pretty much figured out what it was. I kept my distance from Perry, from Layla, and trying to not touch her. I was wearing like these gloves, like, the latex type gloves around the house when she was here, so I wouldn't like touch her with my bare hands. Because I don't know if you know, but with hand, foot, and mouth, you get um, like red blisters all over your hands, in your mouth, and on your feet, typically, and on the soles of your feet. I had it worst on my hands. I had a couple of bad ones in my mouth and very few on my feet, but I had it worst on my hands. And um, thankfully they are for the most part gone away now or they're just like very little um, dots left as they're fading. So it's definitely passing, definitely past it now. I only really felt bad over the weekend. I myself felt fine, but I was still contagious and I still had all the signs of the disease. So that was not fun. It was not a good week. It was a pretty rough week actually because I couldn't really do much with Layla. I couldn't help out with much with her. So unfortunately Perry was left doing a lot of the stuff. Uh, a lot of the caring, a lot of the things for Layla. Putting her to bed, changing her nappy, getting her dressed. All those sorts of things that I normally would at least help out with. <laughs> you know, I'd be able to help um, or, do, or do and anyway. Um, so as a precaution, I, was, I spoke to a doctor and stuff, and as a precaution, we decided to cancel Layla's birthday party, which was supposed to be tomorrow. And um, just because I could still be a little bit contagious, even though I'm better, I feel better and everything, I could still be a little bit contagious, and we didn't want other people, we didn't want to put anyone else's children at risk. Like, I basically tried to stay at home as much as possible, barely gone out at all for the last week. And um, I definitely feel like I'm past the worst of it now. But... Um, I still didn't want to take that risk of passing this on to anyone. It was a horrible illness. I'm just so grateful, like touch wood, that Perry and Layla both didn't catch it from me. And um, at least as far as we know, they're still fine. 
so anyway we cancelled her birthday and i was chatting with her parents earlier this week and just sort of explaining why we decided to cancel it and that i was ill and they were asking how i was doing and all that sort of stuff and my dad sort of off the cuff just said oh well do you want us to you know i can come down and like uh, pick up layla on friday and bring her back up to london for the weekend and we can have her here and stuff and I didn't really think much of it because my dad has said stuff like that before and he probably has meant it before but I've never really sort of taken it seriously and so anyway uh, the conversation ended and sort of when I you know hung up and carried on with our evening and stuff and then after Layla went to bed I sort of mentioned it to Perry that oh by the way like my dad said that he said this and he sort of looked at me and was just like are they serious like can, can, can they do that <laughs> And I was like, um, yeah, I, I guess I, I assume it's fine because they I'm pretty sure they'd cleared the weekend anyway for Layla's birthday uh, to come down here. So I, I called my mum the next morning and I was like, are you were you serious about taking Layla for the weekend? Like, do, would you want to take her for the weekend? She was so excited at the mention of like, me handing off my child to her that she literally could not contain her excitement. She was squealing on the phone. She was so excited. So I was like, okay, I, get, I take that to be a yes. And in the end, we decided, we agreed that we would meet halfway. So there's a service station halfway between our house and my parents' house. Um, so we agreed we were gonna meet there to hand her over, <laughs> as it were. And, um, and then we'll meet there again at the end of the weekend to pick her up. So we took her this morning. She got up this morning. She had her, she, we gave her two of her presents last night. And um, so she played with those. And then we um, had breakfast together this morning. We got her a chocolate cake. And it's one of these ones, it was quite cool actually. It's from the supermarket. I was originally gonna bake her a chocolate cake, but she's not gonna be here to eat it. And I'm not gonna eat it. So I didn't wanna go through the effort of baking a big cake only to have to throw it away, which seemed a bit pointless. So we got a, a small ish, it's still actually bigger than I expected, cake from the supermarket. And it's um, just a regular chocolate cake. And then it's got a chocolate dome on top. And it's like a surprise cake. So you're supposed to smash the dome in and there's like all these like sweets and stuff inside. It was like the topping for the cake part. Anyway, Layla had a great time smashing that open and basically just ate chocolate for breakfast. So <laughs> we basically stuffed her full of sugar and then passed her off to my parents to deal with the mess. <laughs> but um, but no, it, it was good. And she was excited to see them. And, and then yeah, so we handed her over and then we don't get her back now until Monday morning. So we have three whole days and three whole nights without a child. <laughs> oh, I say without a child, she's with my parents. But um, we are child free for the weekend. And this is the first time we, um, we've had that we've not had Layla around for more than one day or more than overnight um and also this is the first time we have a decent chunk of time without Layla where we don't have something else going on like we were both in New York for well he was in Perry was in New York for a couple of weeks and I was there for a week so we had about a week when we were there together but we both had so much going on we barely got to spend time together I think we got to go to breakfast together once and we had did we even have dinner together at any point that, while we were there? I can't remember. I don't think we did. I don't even think we managed to go out for dinner together one night. Um, that's how busy it was, that trip. So, um, so yeah, this, I'm looking forward to this. Perry's obviously working today, it's Friday. So I'm treating this as a bit of like a bonus work day and trying to get some work done and obviously doing this podcast. And then, um, and then yeah, we don't really have anything planned for this weekend. I think we're maybe gonna go to the cinema one night um but that's really it i think we're just gonna sleep <laughs> to be quite honest just gonna sleep and enjoy not having to wake up in the morning and just resting relaxing i don't think either of us have realized how badly we needed the break um until we took my parents up on their offer i have not been in the best place um emotionally mentally as uh, i would like to have been recently i think there's just been a lot going on um it's January was a very hard month. January was a lot more difficult than I expected it to be. There was a lot of added stress, a lot of it self-imposed to be quite honest, looking back on it now, I didn't need to be as worried about things as I was, but you know, hindsight and all of that. Um, uh, yeah, and Perry was stressed. He had a lot of stuff going on with work. It was just a really busy um, 
high stress period of time for both of us um, and I don't think we've really had a chance to recover from that and like sort of come back down from that and so I feel like this break is really needed for both of us we just need to reset and kind of just have a yeah just have a break really there's nothing else to say and I've always been a proponent of needing to have time away from your children um, to kind of like not lose sight of yourself I guess and also for me especially I don't I've never been officially diagnosed as having had depression in the past but I know I have tendencies to get depressed and have depressive moments and days and weeks even but um so I'm very well aware of like where this is headed if I don't do something about it so um so yeah I'm just trying to trying to get ahead of that and yeah just take a bit of time that I need because I can't be I can't be the parent that Layla needs if I'm not okay myself so yeah there's that um and I know she's gonna have an amazing weekend she's gonna be spoiled rotten by her grandparents and my brother and she's gonna have the time of her life so um honestly I couldn't imagine a better birthday weekend for her than that so so yeah I think that's it I am off to go edit this podcast and tidy up this mess because there's a lot we should see this table it is it, it is a state I'm kind of pan you around there's stuff here there's stuff around this side and there's laundry <laughs> anyway yes so I've got to go tidy up all of this and um and yeah thank you for joining me sorry I got a little bit rambly towards the end but you guys don't seem to mind that too much and uh and yeah, I don't know what else I'm going to do this afternoon. Um, oh, that was it. I'm finished writing up that shawl pattern and getting that finalised. Or as, well, at least get the draft finalised. And um, hopefully get that sent out to my tech editor if I can. If not today, then I'll probably do it either over the weekend or early next week. Yeah, that's it really. All right, thank you for joining me today. I will chat to you guys again soon i'll probably be back with another vlog of some kind spinning or otherwise and um yeah see you guys soon bye